Jai Hind. Good afternoon, my loving children. Today we'll be doing our grammar section. And we, I will be taking up a topic which you are doing not from your fourth, fifth standard, but from your first standard. So the topic for today's class is subject verb agreement. So children, I want all of you to be present with me in this virtual class. And for that, I'll be checking your attendance today. I'll take two minutes time. Just I'll go through the attendance. See, I can see many of you yet. You are waiting to join. Children, one thing again and again I'm repeating. I don't know why you are not serious counting your attendance. 75% of attendance is must. Anyways, now every day I remind you and if you don't, you would be in problem because every day we are keeping a note of your attendance. So today what did I say? Join your Tulika ma'am in her grammar class and the topic is subject and verb agreement. When I say subject and verb agreement means there must be some agreement between the subject and a verb. Now what is a sentence children? When the words are arranged properly to give a meaningful sentence, isn't it? That is a, giving a, give a proper meaning. It is a sentence, isn't it? The sentence should have a subject, a predicate and the verb and auxiliary verb also, isn't it? So here when I say that I'm teaching you today the subject verb agreement, what do I say? That I'll be teaching you the relationship where there is an agreement between the subject and the verb. Right? So are you all ready with your B notebooks? So start and those who are using your mobile phones, what you do? You transfer your phone to your landscape mode. Until then, Tulika ma'am will be connecting you with her PPT, which she has made for you to explain the chapter more clearly. So here is subject and verb agreement. So I move to the next slide. Now children, why do we learn subject of agreement. Now, I think Sreyash will be there asking me, ma'am, why do we learn? Or somebody, Sneha, or Ramon, Upasana doesn't ask any question nowadays. Aditya Narayan is very silent. I don't know why. Is he studying, busy studying other subjects? Or he's not studying anything. He's in a holiday mode. Anyways, so you people would ask me, ma'am, why do we learn? Why do we learn the subject verb agreement? Yes, children. These are the objectives. Students will be able to build the sentences in which the subject and verb agree. So you would learn to frame the sentences where there would be a balance between the subject and the verb. There should be an agreement between them. The subject and verbs must be must agree. Now, how it would agree? If the subject is singular, the verb also acts singularly. How does a verb act singularly, children? Can you tell me? Yes. Rude verb. Please write it. I'll give you one minute. Please write it, write it quickly. I shouldn't give you one minute, half a minute. If the subject is singular, then the verb acts singularly. What do I mean by this? Write it quickly, quickly, quickly. Yes, 
the subject and the verb it must agree and if the subject is singular the verb is also singular how when the root verb plus s or es the root verb plus s or es isn't it this is a singular form of verb but when the subject is plural the verb also acts plurally how root verb it is used as it is we do not use or we do not add s or es to the root verb isn't it now i'm giving you an example ram writes a letter now you should ma'am my name is ram mohan why did you call me ram okay rita writes a letter so rita is sing what what is the subject first what do we do we find the subject and to find the subject we have to use what the verb the verb is writes who writes who writes the subject who is the subject rita so rita is singular or plural children rita is singular and so the verb is also singular by rita writes a letter right is the root verb do you agree right is the root verb plus s or es then i say rita and shamita write what do we put the plural form of verb what is plural form of, of verb write isn't it a letter right so the agreement allows us to show who is doing what in a sentence by indicating which parts of the sentence go together now write a simple sentence we don't have the board write a simple a simple sentence in your notebooks so i'm writing it on my screen here yes the dog buries a bone the dog buries a bone now you may write your own sentences but 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 you have to write my sentence also right so the example is the dog buries a bone the dog is plural or singular children please write it yes it is singular the verb also acts singularly by adding s buries a bone now the students who or what is doing an action in the sec sec uh, sentence who is doing this uh, action here the verb is bury who is who is burying we can get we get the name of the subject we get the subject that is the dog so underline the word dog and explain that this is the subject of the sentence so when we do subject verb agreement what do we do we first try to find out what is the subject of the sentence right then we see what is the number is it singular or it is plural then we make an agreement with the verb subject singular verb acts singularly putting s or es to the root verb if the subject is plural the verb acts plurally with using the root verb without adding s or es right you read so remind students that there may be other nouns in a sentence but only the one doing the action is the subject now this line when i was uh um, preparing your ppt i thought this is a very important line and i just mentioned it children 
that in a sentence there may be more than one noun but all the nouns are not the subject we have to find out the verb and after the verb who is doing the action the noun the then we write we can find it we can mention the subject right now you would add identify the action in the sentence that is what the dog is doing circle the words worries and explain that this is the verb remind remind your children remind your students that a verb is a word that describes action verb in a simpler way what do we say is the doing word is verb isn't it naming word is noun describing word is adjective so a verb is a word that describes an action or state of being write the definition of the subject and verb on the board of the student in reference now we don't have the board so what i do i have asked you i have written it please do write the definition of the subject and the verb in your notebooks yeah. come on quickly quickly and you can write it in the chat box also in short words i mean in abbreviated words in abbreviated words you can write the definition of one or two one or two students would be okay the definition of the subject and verb be quick and you will be giving you will be writing your own examples you would be writing your own examples children write simple more sentences on the board and invite students to come underline the subject and now what do you do when you have written the sentence you would underline the subject the subject would be underlined and the verb will be circled right my cats chase mice so my cat would be underlined and chase would be circled the kids runs the kid runs home so the kid would be the subject runs circle it would be the verb ants always eat my cookies so eat is the verb who is who is doing the action ants underline it is the subject now what is the role of subject verb agreement it is important to ensure that the subjects and the verbs always agree with each other the relationship between the subject and verb lies on the heart of grammatically correct english writing so if you learn this i'm sure you would be perfect in writing your english language subject verb agreement unifies a sentence and makes it easier to understand now verbs tell you that what subject of a sentence or clause of doing or being verbs are conjugated according to person number gender tense aspect mood or voice again i repeat children the verbs are conjugated according to the person to the number to the gender to the tense to the aspect mood or voice verbs are the heart of sentences and clauses they are indispensable to formation of a complete thought
Now, how do we teach subject and verb effectively? I can see step one, step two, step three. Step one, identify the subject of the sentence and underline it one line. So, how do we do it? First, you would take your pen or pencil and you would identify the subject. And how do you identify the subject? For that, first you have to see the verb. Who is doing the action or verb is action word? Who is doing the action? We get the answer. That is a subject. Identify the subject, identify the subject as singular or plural because the answer will help us to identify the correct subject verb agreement. Now the step three, check the rule that applies to the subject located in the sentence that I've already discussed with you people. Singular subject with singular verb, plural subject with plural verb and there are some rules which are exceptions which I'll be doing. I'll be doing all the rules. Don't you worry. Rule one, singular subject takes singular verb and plural subject takes plural verb. This is most commonly used rule on subject verb agreement and will serve your purpose in, mo in most of the occasions. Now examples, Rama blinks even few seconds. Rama and her friend blink every few seconds. He eats frequently. That is why he is obese. The siblings eat frequently. That is why they are obese. City A is the host of the next games. City A and B are the host, co-host for the next games. However, this rule has many exceptions. Exception 1. Singular subject I and you take plural verbs. I blink. We never say I see you writing. I blinks. I writes. I wrote. I, I write. No. I blink. I is singular but these are the exceptions. It takes a plural verb. You eat frequently. You is second person. Here also. That is why you are obese. That is why you are obese. I have refused participation in the event. I have refused, have refused to participate in the event. Exception 2. This rule does not apply to simple past tense without helping verbs. Example, the student made merry in absence of the teacher. The students made merry in absence of the teacher. So, the, the rule does not apply in the case of simple past or without any verbs. Now exception 3. This rule does not apply to the following helping verbs. When they are used with a main verb, will, would, shall, should, can, could, may, might, must. So, what is the example? Let us start doing the example. He must go to the college today. We must go to the college today. So, he must go and we must go is all the same. This, this, the first is singular, the second is plural. But both take the same form of verb. The next example too follows the same pattern. Dev, David can lift the suitcase. David and Mac can lift the suitcase. 
the simple future tense is covered by will or shall always remember this now the rule 2 i'll do till rule 2 and after that i'll ask you to revise hmm words that come between subject and verb do not affect the number singular or plural of the verb so ignore intermediary words for the purpose of matching a subject with its verb well this isn't really an independent rule but it helps in applying the first rule better examples the price of tomatoes has gone through the roof of the last two weeks the cons the consortium of the bank has sent usd 2 200 million to abc limited now the recommended post c if you want to learn another grammar rule and practice exercises you may have a look at the rules of preposition with examples and quizzes and exercise and exercises on prepositions so should i shift to rule 3 now i don't think so please revise revise children i'm giving you time the i have not locked my site yet so go through each and every segment and till then i'll be sharing a worksheet with you all right you will be solving that worksheet and you will be sending it to me immediately am i clear immediately i want it so that's it for today hope you are understanding and you are enjoying the class with your tulika ma'am goodbye till then be safe don't be a trouble be positive thank you jai hind